So I'm going to start. Uh, this is the first time that I'm doing something like this. This is my, this is my first streaming. And I'm not doing it in my main languages, in my main tongue. Uh, uh, the reason is because uh, Avilight Studios is, um, is a company that is global. So I guess that the voice is, uh, is in English. Uh, it's, uh, it's the way to, to communicate with the world uh, with, a, with a global audience. So, so I'm going to, to try to do it in English and let's see how it goes. To start, I'm going to present myself. My name is uh, Miguel Garcia. I'm the creative director of Havila Studios. Um, and today I'm going to play uh, RTS games and I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, what's behind those games. I don't want to be super technical. Uh, what I want to, to just uh, do is uh, just uh, chill playing these cool games and explain maybe uh, about uh, interesting theme from the perspective of a game developer that's it so i think that we can we can start okay so i'm going to start uh, a new uh, a new game okay so i'm going to start a new game yeah it's going to be this one I'm going to be Vikings. Okay. So here we are. Uh, to start, we are going to talk a little bit about uh, the game. The game is uh, uh, Age of Empires 2. This is a remaster of the original game uh, that was released a uh, uh, lot of time ago. This is a game that I used to play when I was a teenager and, and even uh, we played uh, through the, the modem, through the telephone line uh, in uh, VS battle with uh, some friends. In this game you have to, to control a civilization, you have to build an army and also control uh, how you collect resources and how you use those resources to, to expand your your village and then become in a city and 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 that more more or less what is the game about so to start uh, i'm going to just pick uh, one of the units and i'm going to to build something i'm going to build a, i'm going to build a house so just i have to put the, the house over here mister? Look, the way that the, the user interface is uh, placed. Uh, in this classic uh, RTS game, we have like, uh, well, yeah, also in modern ones, uh, we have like uh, two kind of uh, games. Once, uh, one of them uh, is like this one, uh, Age of Empires, in which uh, you select a um, uh, new unit, and then uh, you have the options that uh, you can do with that unit. Uh, later, we are going to play also Command and Conquer. And in Command and Conquer, you will see the other way that uh, those kind of game uh, treat the user interface. Because uh, in, in uh, Command and Conquer and other games, you have like the actions always visible, and you don't select the units the unit uh, to do the action through the unit. Uh, instead, you do the action through the interface and that will apply to the unit. But in this case, uh, as I yeah. said, uh, you have to select the, the unit and you have to choose the command that you want to, to order to. So, okay, I'm going to build also, well, another house. More houses. And I'm going to order to collect Timber Hoch Bandi. Because in this game we have the resources are uh, good, food, gold, stone, and this is the number of the units that the unit that I have. 
and in this part of the user interface I see the status of the of my civilization. When I have enough resources, I can pass through a different era. And uh, this pass to another era uh, will unlock uh, new kind of units and buildings and so on. So I'm going to start collecting the basic resources uh, mm -hmm. to collect food. I can kill <laughs> this animal. Or, or I can, uh, I can, for example, build this. Uh... No, not yet. Then I'm going to build a a good camp. I'm going to build also a, a strong one. At first, I have to. To explore a little bit because I have to reveal the map a little bit more to look uh, where is the the canteen where is the where is stone near of this place so what you are seeing over here the the black part this is uh, usually called the fog war uh, the war fog uh, it's a resource uh, that uh, some game use to represent when you don't have a, a part of the map discovered yet. So in order to reveal more map, you have to explore. So just uh, take this unit and go over here. And this is interesting because uh, in Age of Empire they are using the Fog uh, of War in two levels. You have the, the more darker one is the one that uh, you didn't visit that part yet and you have uh, this other one uh, lighter uh, but uh, also black uh, part that is a part of, ma of the map in where you have been there before but uh, you don't have right now units that can see that part so you can see the layout of the map, but you uh, are not going to be able to see the unit on those intermediate uh, parts, the more like the one. So in some stages of the game, you are going to need uh, to put uh, towers or distribute units on those places just to to cover more part of the terrain with uh, more eyes and to in order to understand where the enemy is going to to come yeah I, i'm looking for this is done yes this is the one that i'm looking for so i'm going to build my Minor one, yep. Pushash Mister. Near the the stone. Oh, this this kind of uh, brass uh, are useful to to get uh, food too. So instead of killing animals, you can go to grab this resource from here. And what I'm going to do next is to produce ma more units. So in this game you, you have to build houses to, to increase the number of, uh, of citizens in your town. And then you can produce a uh, citizen. So see, I have four citizens and I can have uh, 15. So I'm going to build a, a little bit more of them. Yeah. Nama matter. Shh. Win. 
Gagnus Matter. Okay, so I'm going to Pui. be collecting food. I'm going to be collecting Nama stone. Mother. And I'm going to be collecting uh, some good. Kimber Hochbandi. So meanwhile, uh, I think that we can talk a little bit uh, about what's behind this game. So this game is how uh, sounds like uh, what well, it feels like uh, three dimensional, right? But this game is made by uh, this this game is made using sprites, sprites and tile sets. So what is that? Uh, a tile set uh, it's uh, something like this. Uh, you are going to be able to see what uh, tile is on top of the game. So the idea is that uh, the map uh, is uh, divided in regions and the buildings and constructions and everything in the map uh, will fit in uh, those units. So for example, one of these uh, buildings can uh, need, could need uh, two by one uh, tiles, another one can be one by one tile, um, and the uh, the graphics the um, the graphics of the building and the graphics of the unit they are done uh, using sprites and what is called sprite set sprite sheet at the beginning they uh, they use uh, 3D software to model all those uh, buildings and all those units. And then, for example, if you have uh, an unit that uh, can uh, do five animation, you have to render the animation from uh, four or eight uh, different point of view. And depending on the where is the unit uh, looking, uh, the game will change the sprite. You have like uh, this unit is a sta stand here from uh, a specific point of view. In this point of view, is in the same pose, but uh, from another point of view, and. This is still the same pose, but from another perspective. So depending uh, where the... Uh, oh, I have enemies. But I, I'm going to continue with this. Uh, depending on where the player is looking, is looking through here or through here, uh, the game will use a uh, those specific point of view but with the same animation giving the impression that uh, the the sprite is it's uh, the, the the unit is in 3d but it's not it's just uh, an, a sprite that is moving and is changing the uh, image uh, with the same animation but uh, to another point of view the buildings buildings are made to fit in this uh, region for example you can see that this one this one is three no four by one and this tower is like one by one So these sprites uh, are just made like uh, like I said before. They are made in a 3D software. They uh, then they are rendered in a specific point of view. In the case of the buildings, they are rendered in the perspective of the of the camera that is looking to the map in an isometric per per perspective, and they use also mask. To determine uh, at uh, what 
uh, hide what uh, should be hidden behind the these images. So, for example, they have mask so with something like this, usually in black and white, to determine if uh, there are something behind is going to just occlude that uh, object based on the position on the grid in the vertical and the horizontal horizontal uh, edges basics so let's see how it goes my resources collection i have a lot of gold so i guess that that was gold, not uh, stone. And uh, oh, the stone is here. So I'm going yeah. to Number collect the stone over here. I'm going to build a couple of more units. Okay, so and I'm going to build. Ah. I can use the same one, the miner camp for stone and gold, but I prefer to build a new one here, near this part. And you will be guessing where I'm going to start building my army. Okay, I can start, but uh -huh. the thing is, uh, in this game, in, in Age of Empire, I I enjoy more the part in where uh, I can control the units to collect resources, to expand my village and to be very peaceful. But <laughs> sometimes the, the enemy doesn't think the same, the same way, Queen. so they eventually will come to attack me, so I have to be protected. Butter. I'm going to be this one. I'm going to be this one over here. Okay, everything seems working I have people collecting stone I have people collecting gold I have people collecting food and I need uh, also good what is good in this game uh, a good strategy is to build a lot of civilian at the beginning to start collecting a lot of resources and then uh, create a, a good army but uh, at the beginning it's better to invest in your civilian and your in your infrastructure infrastructure to collect uh, basic resources because build armies will ask for a lot of resources Oh, I need more houses to continue creating units. So I'm going to spam my village. And what this game doesn't have is a button to rewind to change the speed of the simulation. This is another aspect uh, that we will tell, we will tell, we will talk a little bit in a while. Oh, the leg. Okay. Timber so, Hopandi. Yeah. Gold is okay. Food. I need more food. Oh. Gagnus Mapa. What else? Yeah, win. 
Yeah, stone. I need stone. Too. Nama muffer. Yeah, gold. Win. I have a lot of gold. So it's okay. Nama muffer. Over here. Yes. And I'm going to build a couple of soldiers. What you can do in, in those kind of games too is to select multiple units at a time. Uh, just clicking and dragging. Um, give them the same order at the same time. Okay, so everything seems Perfect. Hmm. Oh, there are uh, enemy unit over there, and that's interesting because, as you clearly see, all my units use the blue color in some part of the models, on the building and on the unit. So one of the things that I like a lot uh, of uh, Age of Empire is that the readability is very good. You can play with another player and you will uh, immediately see uh, which one are your buildings and which one are your units and uh, which one not. And this is because they always use a little bit of the of your uh, color in the in the unit and in the building. The way that this kind of thing are usually made is with a with a mask. A mask is uh, something like this. When you render the the sprite seed, you use like. Um, like a, a specific color, it's like a chroma key. For example, you render the all the unit using this color in some parts, or you can you can have uh, another extra texture to do a mask, but but. Uh, Usually back in the time they used to to have a specific color and then uh, with this color just uh, changing the color the palette of the sprite will alter this color to look like uh, another kind of unit. Well not another kind of unit uh, like uh, the unit of another player. I'm going to explore a little bit with my heels. See, the cool thing about, about this remaster is that uh, I see everything in the same way that I remember in my head. But that can be possible because uh, at the time the graphics weren't so so good. But somehow when they did the remaster, uh, they preserved the feeling that the original game had. And it's interesting because. Uh, this game, some of them have like uh, 3D sequels, like Command and Conquer, uh, the one that we are going to play uh, after that, after this game. And those sequels uh, didn't work uh, that well. And from my perspective, from my point of view, one of the reasons is the readability, the understanding. In this in this game, the isometric per perspective and the, the 
a sprite and, and everything is very clear. You can understand the map. Oh. I'm going to attack them. Yeah, you, you can understand what is happening just looking at the screen. The character have a um, uh, high contrast uh, in comparison with the map and in comparison with another unit that use a different set of colors. And it's very easy and relaxing to see the action and, and in fact understanding what is happening. In those other games, the 3D one, it's more difficult than this classic one, so I guess that this one of the reason because uh, they didn't went that well. Let's see what happened with the new Age of Empire because uh, Microsoft already announced uh, uh, the Age of Empire 4 and I think it's going to come this year. Uh, so let's see. Let's see if uh, the new Age of Empire in 3D is better or not. Okay. So I think that uh, before opening the other game, before opening the Command and Conquer, I want to talk a little bit more about uh, the design of this uh, of this game and uh, how it made. So how it was made. So let me tell you about how those kind of game are. A structure from inside so this game is like uh, you have a part that uh, let me use red you have a part la, uh, that it's like a simulation in the simulation you have uh, two parts your unit the player one and the unit of the artificial intelligence. This simulation, this part of the game is just uh, displaying how everything is behaving. So, the, uh, for example, starting from the state of the different buildings, the amount of life that the different buildings have, and uh, the current state, if they have enough resources, if they are damaged or not and and also the unit uh, the desire of those units uh, the status of those units uh, the amount of uh, life that uh, they have and the simulation this part is like uh, making all those actors moving through the map and make them feel like uh, they are they are alive, right? So this is the the basic part, the basic part, the simulation. You have another part is the input, and that's include include the user interface. So this big module here the input plus the user interface is used to change parameters of the simulation. In our case, we are controller where we are controlling the the unit of the player. The, so when I press something in the in the game, when I press like uh, I choose this Butter. unit Win. and I say to this unit you have to go here in fact what I'm doing is just communicating this part the user interface and the input with the simulation changing some parameters of the unit uh, of my unit so the simulation will continue and will uh, adapt to the new changes in the desires of those actors or of those artificial intelligence because also my units are uh, controlled by, 
by artificial intelligence, but, but it's an artificial intelligence that works for me. The other part is like uh, the representation of, every, of everything. It's like what I see in 3D, in 2D, is just a reflex. It's just the representation of this simulation. So when, when something changes in the simulation, when a position of a character changes in the simulation, that uh, modify how the character is uh, being drawn on the map, on what position, with uh, on, on what animation, from what from what uh, point of view is going to be rendered. And um, that's it. More or less, this game can be simplified as a general perspective in these three areas. And this is this is from the perspective of the more from the progra programming point of view. But uh, also, this game have uh, some interesting thing to talk about uh, from the design point of view. From the design point of view, uh, you have uh, something like this, and this is like uh, the design of the different units of the game. They are not there just to be different. They are there just to be complementary and to be the, uh, the specific unit that can defeat uh, an, another specific unit of the enemy. So, for example, in this diagram, you can see that the unit of the left can attack uh, to the unit of the right, but uh, is vulnerable to the unit of the top. And having a good design of uh, different classes of, uh, in this kind of game, in those kind of game, is very important. And this is called uh, orthogonality. Uh, and that's applied to the graphics and also to the design. Uh, that uh, concept uh, means that uh, if you pick some unit, they have to look different, and they also they also have to behave different in order to be well designed. Another interesting part of this uh, kind of game is something that maybe you cannot notice uh, at the beginning but uh, if you look you will see that in all those games the size of the units are more or less the size of the buildings <laughs> so the scale is like uh, it's like different uh, buildings are smaller that uh, a building like that will be in the reality for example oh. look at this yeah so this is like a fortification and you will see that the size of the unit is very high in comparison with uh, the size of the building you can, you can see here Correct. So look at this. But this is something that when you are playing you don't you don't feel sometimes. See? <laughs> the the unit this this unit, these characters are huge in comparison with the with the size of the building. But it's working, it's working to your eye and, and it's working to the readability. And, and also it's, it's working because uh, the game is uh, giving you more information in less space. So if we were using the, the, the real size of a, of a building like this, for a building like this, we will need more space. So like uh, something like 
and this is not uh, this is not good because you will end with a map very with a lot of themes very soon, right? And we don't want that. Yeah, the, the other thing that I didn't mention before is that uh, those games are, are like uh, tabletop games in where there are a hard rule set of uh, uh, well rules that will apply to all units and building and everything is in balance uh, between uh, each other so the simulation of these uh, artificial intelligence is uh, being fed by a uh, um, database and, and the designer used the raw data of the database to, to level and to, to add the, the different behavior to those units. For example, they will decide that uh, this, this unit will have uh, an effectivity of uh, 25 points and another one will have like uh, less effectivity but more health and um, things like that so what I want you to think about this is that uh, the data is just uh, feeding the simulation so the designer at some point will play the game and will change data and they will see if the game is uh, enjoyable in that way otherwise they will adjust those numbers the amount of light that we have for every unit the amount of damage and everything to make the game feel like uh, is uh, just and, and can be enjoyed Okay, maybe <laughs> maybe this is this is being too technical. In fact, it's not my my intention to talk uh, too deeply about uh, development things. It's more like uh, giving some I don't know, uh, share some information from the perspective of a person that uh, work making game and while playing games, I can share some kind of. Uh, ideas of how are they made. Ah, using direct design and balance yeah. yeah, this is this is very common in those kind of games, of games uh, like uh, having the game totally finished but uh, it's not finished until the numbers are correct. So for example in Command and Conquer there are like uh, postmodern postmodern in the GDC channel that you can see about uh, how they developed the game back then. Uh, they they talk about uh, how they balance like uh, giving more runs to some unit and then making them lighter or giving them more uh, uh, health or something like that. At, at the end. The, the fun of the game is in a right balance of those numbers. So everything that uh, we are been talking about is just to make the simulation alive. But uh, once the rules are established and once the simulation is uh, making the world, uh, the, making the world uh, feel like uh, interactive and, and live, uh, the fun is, is only on the number, so you can play this game in a tabletop uh, kind of game and it will feel more or less the same. Uh, well, it will be slower because you have to, I don't know, throw dice and move manually your units and things like that, but uh, it's something that is totally doable like uh, having those kind of games in a tabletop uh, kind of uh, way to play them 
Okay, so I'm going to show you. No, I'm going to play with these ones. I'm going to show you this game. This game is also a remaster, uh, and it's uh, it's another game that I used to play. Reinforcements have arrived. <laughs> Let me explain a little bit about this game. So, as I said before in Age of Empire, um, one of the core principles of the game is to collect resources, expand your village and make your civilization better and then build an army to defend or attack or play it, that's okay. But in, in Common and Conquer, uh, the balance is more in the in the balance, so it's more like military one, and it's half uh, less part of uh, building your civilization and, and so on. Oh, my units are, are these ones, not their ones. I didn't choose the I didn't choose the Soviet one this time, but uh, I like to play with them. Okay, so I'm going to attack these ones. I have the forces over here. So the idea is... Maybe I'm going to start a new kind of game because this is like the campaign and it's not it's not like uh, because I, I want to start my base from the beginning yes, so the principle I want to in this game I, I can choose where I where I start my base so I'm going to start my base here and as I told you before this game is different in this game I don't have to select the unit and then uh, the menu is contextual to the selected uh, object. In this game I have the actions here and that will apply to uh, to the map. So for example I can click here to build a, a power base and when it's ready I can add them to the map. And in comparison with Age of Empire, the the buildings require to be near to the to the center of the base. So I can expand, but it's not uh, focus on exploring that much as Age of Empire is. Okay. So in this game, I only have one resources one resource and this is Tiberium so I'm going to build a refinery Building. Yes, sir. Affirmative. Vehicle and I'm balance. going to start collect Tiberium I will need Tiberium to create the buildings and I will need Tiberium to create the Waiting units and what I can recommend to people that want to start with those kind of games is that uh, Command and Conquer is easier than Age of Empire. In Age, in Age of Empire you have to control more things. So to start it could be a good game for you. And, and also I want to clarify something. <laughs> uh, these two games are like all ones. But uh, it's not like I only play all games. I I play all kind of games. So on future shows, I will show you more modern ones like uh, racing games or adventure ones or even uh, games that we made at Double Light. And in those games, I will be able to explain to you more details about how are they made. Okay, so I have this ready. I'm going to build my refinery. Yes, and my refinery came with this truck. And this truck is ready to collect the Tiberium. 
Yes, sir. See, the reliability of this game, those kind of game, is awesome. You can see very clearly what is happening. You can also Radiant see point. the fog of war. In this case, well. they only have Agreed. one level of fog. Well. You have discovered the map, or you are not discovered the map yet. So you don't have to have uh, units there to see the, the enemy coming. And let me show you one of the modern Command and Conquerors. And in my opinion, it's just my opinion. Uh, the readability is worse. Just you have like uh, something like this, and yes, it's it's beautiful. The art is very cool, but uh, in my opinion, it's a uh, loss the simplicity that uh, we can see on the original title so agree Marce I'm going to build some units I cannot ah because I need I need the barracks I can also sell the buildings or and i can also repair them and this is big this is this place is uh, from when i i build a satellite i can build a satellite and see all the map here a representation of the map here yes sir okay so the barracks are ready i'm going to yeah what i don't like uh, of Command and Conquer is to have the constraint to build everything near the 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 main base because David ninety six. I just going to ask that. I feel like the modern TS game aren't performing as good as the old one from the nineties. Hmm. Uh, do you mean in sales or do you mean in uh, readability or uh, popularity or what do you mean, David? <laughs> Alberto Macalvi, we have Alberto Macalvi over here and he said that the music is very good. And now I'm losing <laughs> because I was talking too much. And this game is clearly more offensive than the Age of Empire 1. David said that the... Don't you feel like all the RTS players seem to prefer the classic one newer, over newer games? Maybe, maybe. Why do you think that? It's because of the new ones force you to see the action in like a 3D way that is uh, worse for the strategic uh, understanding of what is happening. I lost. Okay. So I think that uh, to end the stream, to end the streaming, I'm going to show you how a, a modern game looks because they are the the user david uh, is talking about how the new ones are worse so i'm going to show you a new one but you will you will just by yourself just let me know if you feel that the classic ones uh seems uh, easier or or better or or you prefer these new ones Mars has said 
The old ones look more cartoonish, don't they? Yes. They feel like uh, tabletop games. This one is very cool. I'm going to try skirmish, but and forget me because I didn't play this game yet. I have the game here for uh, professional uh, use. I mean, for looking the interface and to check uh, how the game behave because we are making right now we are making tycoon games and yeah i've been looking a lot of uh, uis lately so i have this game for this reason yeah <laughs> the game look stunning but uh, the reliability is worse so i see less map David, I don't realize how I always love Warcraft 3, Starcraft 2. Oh, I love Starcraft 2. Maybe another day we can play Starcraft 2. I have not played the modern one because I feel like the old one gives me a better overall experience. David, I agree with you. I totally agree with you. I I prefer Starcraft 2, uh, Command and Conquer, Age of Empires 2 instead of the of the new ones let's see how Age of Empires 4 behaves what does the Empire require? and to take a look to the game um, and end uh, the screen here I just want to open another conversation and is that uh, this is a third kind of RTS game, like um, yeah, there are there are a couple of ones like uh, uh, what is the other famous one? Uh, Sudden Strike. In those kind of games, you can build like squads, so you choose like a couple of them and they are presented in the user interface as a group of them and you instead or instead of uh, select uh, individual units you select the groups to to give them orders like uh, from group to group yeah what i have to say is that these graphics are very cool are very cool but less readable so think about that when you make a game maybe it's important to to be able to read very well what is happening instead of see how cool is everything okay so I think that uh, to end the streaming I'm going to share with you a reflection about making games um, and just use this time to write uh, the if you have any question about the, the kind of games that uh, we have been playing today uh, so my reflections my reflection will start um, from the idea that uh, in a game what is important for the player is like uh, living a fantasy so what is the core principle the core value behind Age of Empire and Command and Conquer the the value or the feeling that the the user have is live the fantasy that uh, you are in control of a village you are in control and you can decide what uh, to do you can decide uh, what kind of building are you going to build first you can decide at what moment are you order uh, which unit and what uh, tasks and this 
is compelling because uh, there are people that want and enjoy to control things and for those people having the control of of the world and uh, having the possibility to uh, to give order to them you feel like a power player you you feel power and you feel you are in control and that's the fantasy that uh, those games uh, prepare for you so when you look at the game on, or when you are designing a game you have to think uh, what is the fantasy that i'm selling is the fantasy driving supercars at a high speed then all the design and all the decision that uh, you do uh, in that game should be oriented to improve that uh, sensation to improve uh, in the mind of the character that uh, is driving a supercar at the highest speed possible and everything feels like uh, he or she can fantasize ah uh, and that's it that's my my reflection about the fantasy that you live in the game and i think that i have some comments over here we have albert that said i think the interesting part about the kind of game is that you can play with a lot of strategies in age of empire you can play a fully passive run building marvels and not attacking anyone or you can play a fully aggressive run attacking everything that moves that is what really gives the player the feeling that they are really in control and they can plan however they like just like they could do if they were an army commander in real life totally agree i cannot be more agree with you albert i think that uh, you get the point and you you really know what is behind the game so yeah so i'm going to end the streaming here thank you everyone for coming uh it was uh a good debut for me i hope the english the english wasn't very bad because as i said it's not my my main language but uh, i'm trying to to use that language because it's the the voice of the studio is the voice of uh, avilize studios and i think in this way we could reach a wider audience so thank you for coming and uh, we will see you next week so subscribe and thank you